The future is here already. It's just not evenly distributed. Yet. Today's world teams with innovation. The nexus of hardware, software, and human ingenuity promises a revolution in possibilities. What does tomorrow look like? Witness Future Proof. All right, folks, welcome back to Future Proof Season 2. Your host here, Eric Cavanaugh. In today's episode, episode 5 of our second season, we're going to tackle one of the most exciting disciplines in the world of data and, frankly, in the business world at large. So thanks to folks like Elon Musk, many of us know about self-driving cars these days, which are fascinating. But the question becomes, if cars can drive themselves, why can't data? And the short answer is data management can drive itself. So today we've got an all-star cast, folks. We're gonna hear from Diane Hinchcliffe of Constellation Research. We're gonna hear from Eves Mulkers of 7W Data out of Belgium. And we're also gonna hear Michael Klaus himself of a company called Atacama that's doing some really cool work in the world of self-driving data management. And what's the upshot here, folks? When you leverage self-driving data management, you improve operations, you improve data quality, because human beings are error prone, and you also allow your team, therefore, to focus on much more interesting and exciting work. So let's drive into the world of self-driving data management right here on Future Proof. Well, thank you very much, Eric. That was a great introduction. So, um, so my background is uh, enterprise architecture, very large systems, uh, having to reconcile that your business is different all over the place with their own databases, uh, their own data warehouses, their own data lakes. Uh, and one of these signature challenges is managing all that data so you have a single view of the customer. The issue that we run into today is the exponential growth of data. We live in exponential times for everything. Um, the amount of data we, we have today is nothing compared to what's coming. And what we already have to now is overwhelming to the processes that, that exist today in most organizations. So how do we do that? How do we tackle that data management challenge? Uh, and I spent a lot of time, a lot of work trying to solve those issues. Right. So the, the root causes are, you know, just you know, go on and on. There's application silos. We don't integrate our systems well. We don't have a master data strategy or, or repository. Uh, we, the, the data sources we have aren't of the quality we often would like. Right. They're often unstructured these days. Uh, and, we, and so bringing them in is usually designed for a single process, not for use across the entire organization. Right. We often don't under uh, control the underlying databases, the uh, commercial off the shelf systems that we have have licensing restrictions anyway, they don't allow us to do that much. They might allow us to add some custom fields, but not you know, reorganize or create a common schema or whatever it is that you need to do. And then how we work with these systems. We have, you know, uh, often have to cut and paste data. We have to import and export and the data gets out of sync and you don't know where's the single source of the truth. You know, where's, you know, how can I find that? And we switch cheese our own data as a result of that. Um, and then we have manual processes for data management that can't keep up, never will keep up. Um, and so, you know, all of this is a recipe for poor data management in most organizations. Uh, they're usually doing the bare minimum. So, you know, I, I would hear the most urgent thing is to make sure you make payroll. Right? Uh, the next thing is to ship everything to your customers. That those are the the kind of you know must uh, must meet deadlines that are, are being addressed with data management successfully, and not much other than that because of all of these issues, right? So, uh, we can fix this in a number of ways. Uh, and, and this is from hard one experience. I've been on a lot of projects where we haven't solved it, and I've been on some that we have solved it. Uh, and the places uh, you can't boil the ocean. You have to focus on where uh, a fix has a lot of value, and people will invest in it. One is that 360 view of the customer, uh, 360 degree view of the customer, uh, focusing on employee experience and core journeys, right? And key processes like sales or project management or operations where people will pay a lot to solve those problems. When data is not lining up, things are inconsistent. I'm reporting this, but you're seeing that, right? Um, in high value system integrations, in, in, in your main line of business systems, uh, if you solve the problem there, you get permission and budget to solve it elsewhere. So I, I often say focus your data management strategy. Uh, and the solutions, we, there, you know, we know what the solutions are and they're getting more off the shelf, um, which is what's nice. Um, creating a master data system that's actually operational, right? A lot of master data that sits on a shelf. You, doing data management to be a librarian to keep it in the library doesn't do anyone any good. Data management has to have an operational component. Uh, and you have to create master data warehouses for reporting for reasons that we'll see uh, in that transaction systems are lousy reporting systems and vice versa. 
Uh, it's a hard one less, right? Uh, cost effective, but comprehensive data management goes across silos um, uh, and, and reaches into all the systems where our customer data might be, or you know, key supply chain data might be, might be. Uh, and intelligent automation of data management at scale to keep up with all this, right? And, and that means you have to make everything much more open than it is. You have to get rid of those application silos, break those APIs and those enterprise graphs powered by master data that fuel all future development and integration, or you just get right back to the same boat, right? So, but we can solve, we can solve these issues. So there's a lot of technical on the ground issues uh, as well, um, operational issues for data management. So how do we, how can we scale data management in the exponential era, right? So it's gotta be the architecture, the database systems, uh, the master data underlying, the quality controls on top of that, uh, the integrations that, that connect everything together, uh, and then all the governance uh, tasks on top of that. So all of those need to be, um, address for the scale problem that we're seeing. Lots more data, lots more systems. I'm seeing a proliferation of applications the likes I've never seen before. And this is, and we need that technology to make our businesses better, but with digital transformation and trends like that, we're seeing this, you know, this hyper scale uh, in growth. And, and so whatever we do has to be able to work next year, five years in the future, and still work 10 years in the future, right? So this is kind of my most technical slide, but I think it's also my most useful slide uh, in that, the real data management situation in most enterprises looks something like this. Um, and, you know, and, and, and the real issue is that it's not operational. It's not actually being used by systems. So most organizations are at the tail end of stage zero, primitive manual data management. Uh, and they're starting getting, getting into master data for their, their most significant uh, types of data. And they're distributing that versus a service with a service oriented architecture or enterprise service bus. Um, but they're moving away from that, right? We want to really get master data that's much more universal via open APIs, right? Uh, and organizations are entering that stage, but that's not sufficient to address the challenges that I had just uh, outlined. We need automated data management, and that's the point of consumption. Your data management is creating the, the, the master data, and it's becoming an operational component in your business. So the solution is, is you know, this, this so-called self-driving data management aimed at outcomes. If we don't aim it at, at you know, the, the pain points at first and then the real business opportunities, then, you, you know, you, you're not going to get the budget you need to fully implement it. Uh, you're not going to get permission to do it. Um, and so we have to add automation, artificial intelligence, cognitive tools, um, and it requires cognitive capabilities that really understand your business uh, because there's a lot of nuance in, in, in data, especially in unstructured data. So contextual automation is the key to unlocking the value of data management. So here's, if you really wanted a list of, thing, of uh, obstacles to knock over, here's what you have to do, right? You have to answer these questions. And they're all, by the way, if you answer them, they represent major opportunities. So I'll leave you with this final point. Uh, and I think this kind of goes along with what Eric was saying in the beginning. Uh, only the unblinking gaze of digital data detectives, right, can, can get in and, and around the clock continuously track and identify data management issues, the opportunities, if your data management system isn't finding your opportunities at scale, you don't get those either, uh, while providing everything with a, a safety net, right? So it's trusted and secure and it's compliant. Uh, and if we do that, um, then, then uh, we, we, can, we can solve uh, the problems that we actually need to solve. And I think we're, we're getting there as an industry. It's great to see. Well, that was a fantastic presentation. I love that unblinking, the unblinking gaze. <laughs> With that, let me hand it off to Eve Mulkers out there from 7W Data. If you're wondering, who is the 7W Data? Well, this is the mastermind behind all that. So Eve, take it away. Okay, thank you uh, for the introduction, Eric. Uh, hope you can see my screen right now. Should be the yep. case. Yep. So oh, a bit piggybacking on whatever uh, Diane was saying, um, I had the idea of the, the data done for you, really, or is it the future? Uh, I still see too many projects where we do that uh, manual data management and all the stuff. And it's hard to uh, tell people what you already can do with machine learning and artificial intelligence to support your uh, initiatives on data management. So in a general way, uh, 
when can data bring value to you? That is when you have trust in the data, there is transparency, you understand where the data is coming from, where it's going, and who is using that data. The understanding that ties back into the contextual part of the data, that you really know um, if you see a field and a value that you really understand what that is. I mean, you were talking about uh, the headers, the data, uh, the metadata which comes in through files and having that understanding, but that is not enough. We need the contextual understanding of where the data lives and what it means uh, related to the business process and the systems. Tying into that, the, the struggles we still see uh, for data management, it's that it takes ages to find the right, the right data and even longer before IT can make that data available. Another big challenge, what I see time and time again, is we have those development tests and acceptance and production systems in place. It's very nice to do your development test in those environments, then move on to the next phase where you do the integration, then move it in the next phase into the acceptance where you sit together with business and they say, okay, this is perfect, right? But sorry, we don't have the production data into our acceptance systems. So you will still find outliers and issues within your uh, data reports once you move to your production systems. So it's kind of, okay, we have this error, uh, the expert at, uh, at stake knows how to fix that and we move on and move on. All of that, simple things that would trigger you if uh, to get that value out, to, out of your data. That is, if we can get faster to that data in a controllable way and time and time again in the same way, in a repeatable way and of course in a so much easier way hopefully in a self-driving management uh, kind of approach how do we do this right now these are days how do we serve ourselves to get into these insights in your data that is we use erds entity relation diagrams your data model on a logical on a conceptual or on a physical le level so why don't we use these new approaches bah. Some people try to reinvent the wheel, and I can imagine sometimes for time and material projects, uh, this is something that you can keep on doing and brings a lot of uh, money on the table for these consultancy companies. So, but then again, uh, so why the heck do we need to search for, for the right data and verify everything time and time again when we write an SQL query to, to get to the data and build those insights, or when you write a Python code or build your Excel pivot table uh, to find the right insights. So where are we going? What is possible already these days? There is already so much we can do with artificial intelligence and automation. We can look at automation. If we look at software engineering and where they came from and where they're at right now, these are in, in fact the principles we can apply to data management as well. If you look at automated testing, ensuring that you have all all the time consistent data quality and you can do data uh, test driven data development uh, there are so much pains that you can solve at the end of the of the data supply chain then we have the data management but we didn't yet speak uh, about infrastructure uh, that's why we see we are running out of disk space or we don't have enough compute power and that's why the etl badge job overnight failed and running uh, until the end of the day before you get your insights from from yesterday so what about a system that could automatically scale and provide all this kind of information a part of the solution is these are days the hybrid cloud uh, platforms that help you with scale at, at demand and when you really need it. So that's a part of the problem uh, is a part of how we solve that problem with compute storage and memory as we need it. Let's explain a bit how artificial intelligence and machine learning versus the old school of modeling and data management, what we are doing. Typically what we do, we take our data on a very granular level and we try to identify what type of data do we have in front of us. If we have those identified, we try to group them in a, in a more common way where we say, okay, this, this relates to marketing, this relates to finance, and we try to find intermediate levels. 
on the data quality level, we just just do spot checks and we know how your data looks like. We use uh, uh, systems like uh, profiling to find the minimum, the maximum, the mediums, and uh, the outlier values. But if you look on machine learning, what that can do, it can for you really define those outliers. And let me jump back a bit, find those outliers for you and help you classify. There are already so many libraries out there that have very uh, good knowledge of contextual environments and can identify for you by looking at the data, how it looks like, uh, identify, for example, it's, they're pretty good at identifying a bank account, a telephone number, uh, an order number, an invoice ID. So that's, that's a lot of information that these machine learning libraries can help you in uh, managing your data. So what is the solution to all of this? Let's have an all-inclusive data managed platform, as I call it, that can ingest your data in an automated way, is pretty uh, intelligent to test your data, profile data to build that understanding of your data, identify that data in the classification part, help you find your data and kind of play the GPS for all your data resources, what you have in your organization. and by having all that in place, build an understanding of your data. Together with the whole enterprise, uh, we need to be able to collaborate around these data sets. So somebody finds an insight and can attach that to your data asset. So that is knowledge that you build and can share with, uh, amongst your uh, complete enterprise. And an easy way to share that data to people that want to build their own data sets and try off with, uh, with a small part of that. And of course, everything needs to be embedded in a very well protected and government environments. Another part that we need to address in that unique platform that should tackle analytics uh, workloads, transactional workloads, a data warehouse or data lake or a data warehouse lake, whatever you want to call it, uh, in a structured and be able to work with structured and unstructured data. So these days, there are a lot of offerings already on the market that can help you and drive that uh, automated and AI and machine learning supported data. But people still need to understand uh, which capabilities are out there on the market and uh, help you uh, in your data management struggles from day to day. I love it, less, less effort, more value. Time, faster time to value is another key component as well. And with that, I'm going to hand the keys off to Michael Klaus of Atacama. Thanks, Eric. Um, th these were actually amazing, amazing insights. And uh, I would love actually to have a discussion on these, uh, but I have a few things I want to share uh, by myself. Um, we, we keep talking about data management, uh, but the more the more we are kind of we as a company are doing what we're doing, we see that it's it's simply inseparable from uh, from the governance, right? The one other thing I wanted to mention, I think it's it's by now it's pretty clear uh, where are the benefits of intelligently automating data management, right? The, the benefits are clear, it's effortless, it can be effortless, it's the only way how you can scale in these days, right? How you can scale actually your business. One other take that I, that I wanna share with you, with the audience is, is actually this. Um, and it's been going on for years, right? But maybe maybe today with, with COVID, it's, it might be even more pronounced. Um, the digital transformation have have been happening right for for a long time, and now it really is happening because there is no other way, right? In most organizations, the the relationship between those people is something something like this, right? They there is a lot of tension um, because the people who are focused on governance they are seen as uh, those are seen as obstacles, right? Uh, the, the agile people would rather do it quick and dirty way. We just need to have it, uh, etc. So I'll try to explain how I think the, the self-driving or intelligently automated data management and data governance. So what is it that, that I'm talking about in general? Um, we at Arakama have, uh, have a platform which we call Arakama One. 
So what we what what uh, what we as Arakama are providing to the customers is a platform which lets the organization gradually build this layer. And I think the gradual um, nature is also important because you never boil the ocean, right? You go step by step. What we are saying is we will be taking your integration kind of needs and we will be gradually building the layer, adding it to the layer so that over time you have a layer where you will find most of the data that you need. And of course, you need to be able to provide it. Um, if you kind of break it down in, in high level use cases, what the platform does is, is really discovery profiling, finding the data, understanding what's in it. It, uh, it needs to have, and it has very powerful metadata management, which is seen as data catalog and glossary to the users. Of course, it has a data quality management to monitor quality, improve the quality. Mass data management is uh, is essential, and a generic uh, data integration functionality is there as well. Now, we are seeing what we're doing as the data layer rather than these individual modules, but I think it's important to understand what's kind of uh, underneath. Um, so if you, if you take a look at it, um, in the form of this uh, high-level architecture, um, you have the, in general, some kind of sources on the left side, and everything that uh, that in the in the blue or magenta color is our value proposition. So we can connect to any data source in any shape and form. Then we will do a lot of stuff with the data so that it is at the end it's trustworthy, it's it's governed, it's of highest quality. And then we can provide this to the value creators, to those who are actually creating the, the products based on the data product that uh, that our platform can generate. Um, what's important, it's not only about data, but it's also about metadata, of course, on the input, but also on the output. Uh, if you don't have the metadata for uh, everything that's in that layer, you simply still are kind of operating blind. Um, and if you kind of put it in 3D, that's what's now being also called uh, a data fabric. Now, this this webinar is called, um, it, you know, the topic is self-driving. But what I what I want to talk about is where I think we are as an industry and how the dream of self-driving fits into it and, and where we are today. So most organizations, unfortunately, are in the age of fully manual driving, meaning if I give you an example of data quality, you know, you saw there are quite a few use cases, but if I pick just the data quality, um, in, in the data quality field, doing things manually is anything from you want to understand quality someone needs to go and write sql to understand the quality of this and that table what i also call manual is you have some kind of technology but the technology works the way that uh, basically a data steward analyst needs to go in and define in a very technical technical terms define the business rules for the quality right this this is still pretty manual um I think, unfortunately, probably majority of organizations are, are in this stage today. There are few uh, technologies on the market which have some augmentation available in one of the disciplines that I was talking about, one of the use cases. I'll give you a question. What do you think needed to be, uh, needed to be done to obtain this? So in most cases, you would have to have someone to ingest the data in, in some kind of tool, then define the rules, etc. In our platform, in the current GA version, you actually only needed to connect to the data source and you needed to uh, confirm suggested rules by the platform. And that's all you needed to do. All of uh, everything else would happen automatically. So this is almost already self-driving, but we would still call it augmented. And I'll show you what self-driving self really is. What you can also get uh, is, is the data lineage, of course, in this case, with the overlay of, of the quality. Um, and this is how you do it. This is, this is how you do it today in the augmented uh, 
age or augmented version of the platform. So what we're looking at here is the, let's say, the data steward looking at one particle table. I think Diane or Eve also talked about um, kind of switch from rule-based to pattern-based uh, approach to things. So in the in the platform, and it's it's already I think it's already can count as self-driving because you really don't need to do anything. The platform will be watching trends and then it it um, suggests to the users, hey user, I think this is anomaly, and then you can as a user confirm it or or reject it, and this way the platform learns. So what I'm trying to say somewhere on the way between augmented to self-driving you need to have these two approaches to things. One is rule-based and one is uh, pattern-based. When I when I talked about the need for data governance to be um, fully integrated into data management, which also means it can be automated, uh, I want to share what is coming in, in the upcoming release of our platform. And uh, it, is, uh, it is the ability to define policies within those policies you can define uh, various ways how the policy is implemented uh, uh, you know either encrypting the data or restricting access to data or some other ways or deleting data when it's uh, when the policy speaks about data retention and once you define that um, this is how you define it actually any consumer of the data in the data layer that i keep talking about and the consumer can be, of course, a user, but more often than not, it will be a system or API. Any consumer will um, only get the data based on basically the cross section of his or her user privileges and uh, the policies applied on the particular data. So this is this is really a kind of full integration of governance into um, into the data management. Um, this is this is when you have a policy applied, the data is encrypted. So this this was really, I don't know, two percent of um, uh, the functionality of the platform, mostly focused on data quality, in the augmented version, which has been available for some time, at least from from Arakama. Now I want to talk about what uh, about a dream, right? The, the dream of self-driving data management and governance. And of course, in in the in the car analogy, the the dream is you get into a car, you tell the car where you want to go, and that's all you you care about. You don't need to do anything else, right? You don't need to search for steering wheel. You don't need to know um, the actual route. Uh, you don't need to do anything. You just sit and and work with your you know colleagues or or relax or whatever. Um, if you translate it into data management, uh, we think it it means following things. Uh, of course, it is uh, kind of uh, ba um, built on top of the augmented. It's a predecessor. Um, it's autonomous. Uh, it's automating most of the or all of the processes. Um, and of course, it needs to be learning from uh, from the user input. There is still user input in the way of uh, confirming or rejecting things, and it needs to be taking this into account uh, into the machine learning uh, algorithms. The self-service UI is still available, but it's a different type of self-service compared to uh, today's self-service. The UI is really presenting user with suggestions and user is confirming or, or rejecting the, the suggestions. And if I if I focus on the, the one challenge which I think businesses are facing, and there are many, of course, related to data, um, we believe that with this platform, you can have the impatient, agile people actually doing doing things much faster, but at the same time in much better and much more governed way than if they did it in a quick and dirty way. Great stuff, folks. We're going to bid you farewell. We do archive all these webinars for later viewing. The archive is usually available in about an hour. So things are going pretty fast. They've automated that part of the process. But look these guys up, Eve Mulkers of 7W Data, Diane Hinchcliffe from Constellation Research, and of course, Michael Klaus from Atacama. Very, very cool. And yes, we can all get along, folks, superheroes.
as well. We'll talk to you next time, folks. Take care. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank Thanks, you, everyone. Bye.